week on Top Gear, I get to realise a schoolboy dream. But we begin with an apology. Those of you who have tuned in to see a road test of the Bentley Continental will no doubt be disappointed to learn that just two days before we were due to film it, somebody turned it into a banana-shaped Bentley. Well, you can take heart for two reasons. First, you're not as disappointed as I am. And second, we've got something just as special. If I were to give you unlimited money, what car would you buy? Ferrari, no doubt about it. A red Ferrari. A bit Ferrari, wouldn't it? A red sports car. I think I would buy a Ferrari. Had to be a Ferrari, wouldn't it? isn't it that just about everyone in the world would chop off an important limb or two if it meant they could have a Ferrari? And yet the so-called experts, the people who write about cars like this in the motoring magazines, are forever telling us that you could never live with one on a day-to-day -day basis, that its fiery Latin temperament would be all too much after a while. Well, that may be the case with the F40, but what about the 348 here? It only costs a miserable £76,000. Surely you could live with one of these every day of the week. Well, there was only one way to find out, and yet again I had to sacrifice myself in the name of this programme. I had to drive around in this for a week. A lot of people ask these days why on earth you would spend all the extra money to buy a Ferrari when for a whole lot less you could have something like a Nissan 300ZX. They'll tell you that it's every bit as fast, that it's just as striking and that it's a whole lot easier to drive and they're right. But a Nissan 300 is not a piece of motoring folklore. <laughs> I'm going to go to a party tonight, and when I'm asked what sort of car I'm running around in at the moment, and I will be, I shall say, a Ferrari. And I shall enjoy saying it almost as much as I enjoy driving it. Crazy Jenny and her mission man We're back in the alley trading hands Walking while Billy with his fancy man On good enough for Saturday night And you've got to stick to our instructions. No, 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 it's a 3 4 eight. You see, that's got a 3.4 litre, 3.2 litre V8 at 90. It didn't have a catalytic converter. Now, mine has got a catalytic that converter. The old one, the old 3 to 8, that never had a catalytic converter. So it means I can be green and fast. The lady looks fine, but unfortunately you're unsuitably dressed. Oh. I thought a Ferrari was supposed to open doors. Didn't have much luck with that one. In a morning, you'd probably expect a Ferrari to be harder to coax into life than Lazarus, or a nightclub bouncer. But with fuel injection, it's up and running the instant you turn the key. 
Turning the wheel is a deal harder. But once extricated from its overnight slot, I was off for another day of soaking up the admiring glances, snarling past people at 30 miles an hour in a car that can top 160. Daft? Yes, of course, but surely only as daft as buying a four-seater and then spending 90% of the time all on your own in it. You could certainly never accuse the 348 of wasting space. Now, I fit just fine, but Yuletide foliage? Well, that's another story. Squeezing things into a Ferrari, then, is hard work. But squeezing the Ferrari through things is not as hard as you might imagine. The visibility is good, but from time to time, I did wish other drivers would give it a wider berth. Mainly because, if it had been damaged, someone would have come and taken it away. I'm not going to pretend that a Ferrari is easy to drive. This is not heavy. This is my clutch. Same goes for the steering. And the gearbox can be a bit recalcitrant first thing in the morning. So no, the Ferrari is a pain when you're in a traffic jam. But all cars are a pain when you're in a traffic jam. The difference is, in a Ferrari, you can at least dream of the day when absolutely nothing else would do.